Hi, my dear students. Welcome back to our English class. Today we are going to study a new chapter, Weaving Nature. You know that our winter season has already started. To protect our body from cold, we all are wearing warm clothes. In this chapter, we are studying about these warm clothes. How people started to use woolen clothes and how they made it. Let us see. Weaving nature. Let us read. What do we do on cold winter days? Have a bowl of hot soup, snacks and wear a woolen sweater? Have you ever observed the designs and the rich colors on your sweaters and woolen blankets? Have you ever been curious about who could have woven such a beautiful thing and how this would have begun? Hi students, how do you spend your days in winter season? Do you like to have hot soup? Yes, of course. Having hot soup along with snacks in cold days are very interesting. At the same time, you have to wear woolen sweaters to protect your body from cold. You may have different colorful sweaters. Have you ever observed for designs and color on your sweater and blankets? Have you ever thought about who could have woven such beautiful sweater? How the thought of making woolen clothes began? Let us see a story behind this. Read this interesting story. Long, long ago, some 5,000 years ago, a shepherd was grazing his sheep on the slopes of the Himalayas. It was winter and was very cold. He lit a fire and tried to keep the cold away. He did not know how to keep warm while walking behind his flock. He only had a goat skin around his shoulder. While sitting near the fire, he pulled the goat skin closer around himself and felt a sudden warmth. It was as if the winter had disappeared. Perhaps that warmth set the ball rolling. Around 5,000 years ago, there was a shepherd who was grazing his sheep on the slopes of Himalayas. It was a winter season and he felt very cold, so he lit a fire and tried to avoid cold. But while walking, he will not get hot from the fire. He had a goat skin around his shoulder. While sitting near fire, he covered his body with that goat skin. He felt more warm. It was just like a feel that the winter has disappeared. This was the beginning of the thought of making woolen clothes. Even today, the Himalayan tribes, the children of that shepherd, are the ones who wave this woolen magic. Our generations, the tribes of Kumon and Gadwal regions of Uttarakhand have mastered the art of weaving woolen fabric. The Himalayan tribes, the children of that shepherd, started making beautiful sweaters. After many years, the tribes of Kumon and Gadwal regions of Uttarakhand have mastered the art of weaving woolen clothes. Let us see how the weaving process continued. Woolen weaving is passed on as a family craft by mothers to their daughters. They learn everything about weaving from their mothers and elders. They enjoy every bit of the weaving process. Many families have looms that are nearly 100 years old. The weaving skill of a family has passed from mothers to their daughters. The daughters of a family learn everything about weaving from their mothers and elders. They enjoyed the weaving process. Many families have looms that are nearly 100 years old. Let us see how they got idea of making designs in woolen clothes. The natural beauty of the place is the base for their imagination. What we see on a carpet, gilt, prayer mat or blankets are the Himalayan glaciers, birds and animals such as monals, whales, sheep and shepherds and shepherdesses. We have seen lot of design on carpets, gills, prayer mats or blankets. They got these old designs from the beauty of nature. The main designs we can see on these items are the Himalayan glaciers, birds and animals such as monals, quails, sheep 
and shepherdess and shepherdesses. Let us see how they design these clothes with beautiful colors. Let us learn something about what goes into making this magic, especially the rich colors. The tribes generally use natural dyes got from leaves, stems, seeds, fruits, bags, roots or flowers. Under the guidance of the grand old elderly woman, the woman mix all these plant parts and what they get are shades of black, yellow, dark red and more. The shepherd tribe generally use natural dyes to color their woolen clothes. They obtain this from leaves, stems, seeds, roots, barks, roots or flowers. By mixing these plant parts, they get different shades of black, yellow, dark red, etc. Young women will mix these colors under the guidance of the grand old elderly woman. The men bring the wool from their own herds and after days of weaving, what the woman produces is something magical. In a shepherd family, men will bring the wool from their own herds. Women will wave cloths using this wool. After that, they use beautiful colors and designs to produce a magical dress. So, next time you wear a sweater, gloves or socks, family, think of these Himalayan tribes who have nurtured this wonderful craft for generations. So, when you wear a beautiful sweater, gloves or socks, think about these Himalayan tribes who have contributed this wonderful skill for generations. Okay, students? Okay, now let us learn some grammar part from this chapter. You have already learned what is a pronoun. Today, let us learn what are subject pronoun and object pronoun. First one, subject pronoun. The pronouns that come as subjects in a sentence are called subject pronouns. The pronouns that come as subjects in a sentence are called subject pronouns. Example. Samraj is baking a cake. He is kneading the flour and whipping the eggs. Here you can see he comes in place of Samraj and he comes as subject of this sentence. So here he is the subject pronoun. Okay. Minu is talking a lot. She is a talkative girl. Here she comes in place of Minu. And she comes as the subject of this sentence. So, she is subject pronoun. Okay. Next, object pronoun. The pronouns that come in the place of the object of the sentences are called object pronouns. The pronouns that come in the place of the object of the sentences are called object pronouns. Examples. This garden belongs to them. Do you want to come with me? Are they going with him? Here, them, me, him. These pronouns come in the place of the object of the sentences. So, they are called object pronouns. Okay? Now, let us study about preposition. A preposition is a word which is placed before a noun or a pronoun to show the relation in which the person or thing denoted by the noun stands to something else. Once again, a preposition is a word which is placed before a noun or a pronoun to show the relation in which the person or thing denoted by the noun stands to something else. Examples on, in, above, beside, between, near, under, behind, etc. On, in, above, beside, between, near, under, behind. These are the examples of preposition. Types of prepositions. Children, 
Prepositions are classified generally into three types based on how and when we use them. Prepositions are classified generally into three types based on how and when we use them. First one, prepositions of place. Show where or how the noun or pronoun is positioned. Prepositions of place show where or how the noun or pronoun is positioned. Examples above, along, among, at, behind, below, beside, between, in, on, inside, etc. Okay. Next one. Prepositions of direction or moment. Show the moment of a noun or pronoun to or from a place. Prepositions of direction or moment show the moment of a noun or pronoun to or from a place. Examples across, along, around, down, into, out of, outside, through, to, etc. Next one, prepositions of time. Discuss at which point in time something happened. Prepositions of time. Discuss at which point in time something happened. Examples. At, by, for, from, in, on, ago, after, before, during, etc. Children, remember this. A preposition is always followed by a noun or a pronoun. Okay. A preposition is always followed by a noun or a pronoun. Okay, students. Today's class is over. Thank you all. Bye.